Um, thank you. <laughs> so uh, I thank Harry for the invitation. And it's my great pleasure to um, give lectures here before the, the good student of KAIST. And uh, so uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the deformation spaces of the Kleinian groups. But because it's a uh, kind of generalization of the notion of Teichmüller Taichmüller space. So uh, let me start with some review on the Teichmüller space. So the first part is a review on the Teichmüller space or Teichmüller theory. Or theory. So, uh, um, so suppose S is a closed surface, well, closed orientable. Um, closed orientable surface. And of, of genus greater than or equal to 2. So G genus 0 case is not interesting at all. And the genus 1 case has some interest, but uh, uh, it's uh, kind of exceptional. So we ignore the two cases and we consider the general case, which is uh, that, that of the uh, genus greater than or equal to 2. So uh, by well, uniformization theorem, so we, we know that S has a hyperbolic metric. So uh, well, at least one, one hyperbolic metric. But we, we know that uh, there are uncountably many hyperbolic metrics uh, on S. So uh, we consider um, the set of the hyperbolic matrix on S. Uh, and uh, denoted by script H of S. And uh, two matrix, G1 and G2, Oh, that should be script. Uh, said to be or de defined to be equivalent if there exists a, a diffeomorphism f from s to s homotopic to the identity. such that one of them, say G2, is induced from G1 by putting it back by, by, by F. So uh, well, let, 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 let it denote the, the, the equivalence relation by, by tilde. And then, uh, the, as I said, Teichmüller space, or, 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 or just a Teichmüller set, maybe, the, the TS is defined to be, well, the, the, this is the naivest definition of a Teichmüller space, so that it's uh, just uh, the quotient of the script H of S by this equivalence relation. So we don't have any topology yet, but as I said, um, we can define the Teichmüller space D in this way. Okay. So uh, now um, we can well put the topology in this set by regarding the T S as a, as a set of representations. So. Uh, if you have a hyperbolic metric there, so if you have a hyperbolic, so so you if you have a hyperbolic metric there, then uh, uh, its universal cover has also a hyperbolic metric, 
by, by putting it back by the projection. And uh, that, so by uniformization theorem, this, uh, well, the simply connected hyperbolic, uh, two dimensional hyperbolic uh, manifold must be isometric to, to, to the hyperbolic plane, the, the canonical hyperbolic plane. So, so the, the, the universal cover, maybe the universal cover with uh, the pullback of the metric is isometric to H2. So this S is a quotient of the hyperbolic plane by the fundamental group of S. That, that, that is a covering translation group. So SM is, uh, uh, is uh, can be identified with uh, the co oh, it's H2. The quotient of H2 by, by some representation of the pi 1 of S is a covering translation group. So, for, so this should correspond to, so the, the, this kind of representation is called the holonomy of the, this uh, hyperbolic structure. So you have a representation of pi 1 S to the isometry, where well, orientation preserving um, isometries of the H2. And this group is uh, known to be equal to the PSL2R. PSL2R is a quotient of the SL2R by its center. Okay. So once you have a, a hyperbolic metric on this, then you get the uh, uh, representation of oh, this, this should be faithful, discrete, because it's a covering translation group. You, you have a faithful, discrete re representation of pi 1 of S into PSL to R. And this equivalence relation defined here is transferred there, and then if you have two, two uh, equivalent hyperbolic metric, what you get here are two representations which are conjugate to each other. So uh, this is the same as a conjugacy. As representations in the PSL to R. So it, it's a kind of easy exercise. So, uh, so uh, you, you, you should try to prove it formally if you. <laughs> um, that, that should be an exercise for you. And then, uh, so what TS the defined there can be identified with uh, the set of the face hole discrete representations of pi 1 of S into PSL to R modular conjugacy. Now here you have a topology. So there, there's a topology, natural topology coming from representation space. So you, because the pi 1 of S is finitely generated, probably you can fix uh, the finite set of generators. And then uh, if you consider the pointwise convergence with respect to the, the, the uh, generator system, then uh, you get the topology there. So. Uh, Oh, this is a quotient space, so, so you, you, you have to consider quotient topology. But anyway, so you, you have a topology there. So by this identification, Teichmiller space, or the Teichmiller set in, in here, T of S, can be regarded as a topological space. Okay. 
so that's a kind of modern definition of the tachymeter space, which is different from the original definition of tachymeter space. So let, now we, we'd like, I'd like to turn to the original definition, but before that, uh, let me just uh, uh, modify this definition. So instead of considering the hyperbolic matrix on this, well, you can consider the pair, pair of, uh, uh, pair like that. So the C sigma is a hyperbolic surface, and the F is a homeomorphism, orientation preserving. preserving homeomorphism from S to sigma. So instead of the considering the hyperbolic metric on S, you, you consider the, the hyperbolic surface sigma outside S and identify S with sigma by using the homeomorphism, or well, diffeomorphism probably. Oh, well, man, the, these are the same thing anyway, so the diffeomorphism probably. You, if you put that, well, the, uh, C infinity structure there, but probably that, 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 that doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, so homeomorphism would go. So, uh, and, and so that, 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 that can be identified with H of S. And then uh, two points in, uh, in this set uh, identified or, or are said to be equivalent if and only if the um, map, the composition of maps, so from, uh, well, from sigma, in this case from sigma 1, 2 to sigma 1, is homotopic to the identity. Oh, oh, no, no, not to the, homotopic to an isometry. Sorry. Okay, so if, if this is, the, the, this composition is homotopic to an isometry, then the, the pullback of the, this metric to there, and pullback of that metric uh, to there, to there, there, there means S, to there, are uh, related by 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 uh, by uh, uh, diffeomorphism homotopic to the identity. So so the, this this definition is equivalent to the the previous one. But here we put the metric not on S but uh, some somewhere else. So uh, that's a difference. But this this is close to the original definition of Taichimura, but uh, anyway, so this is still uh, definition using hyperbolic metric. Now, we turn to um, original definition of Taichimura space, which uses quasi-conformal map instead of the hyperbolic metrics there. So we start from the uh, Riemann surfaces and, well, so uh, let me, well, let, let me define first a qu something called quasi-conformal uh, maps or quasi-conformal homeomorphism properly maps. So suppose you have two Riemann surfaces. Which are uh, assumed to be uh, homeomorphic. So uh, there, there is a homeomorphism from sigma 1 to sigma 2. So this is a homeomorphism. So now we define uh, 
something called Bertrami. Coefficient. Coefficient. Um, at at point Z in a sigma one. So which is defined to be the um, so it's a partial differential with respect to the complex conjugate deck at Z in the so here, um, this means, um, so, so you, ha you, you have a, so you, you, because you are considering a Riemann surface, you have a local coordinate in a complex plane. So, comp so that, that local coordinate is denoted by, by, by Z. So that, that is, uh, so you, you have a real axis and a, a complex axis. So and the, the, this means, uh, oh, maybe the half of the uh, this one, and this is uh, half of this one. Yep. Um, um, I, I'm not assuming that this is a diffeomorphism actually. So, the, so to be more precise, this is not uh, uh, differential in the ordinary sense, but uh, it's a differential as a distribution. So, the, um, the, do, do they know the <laughs> differential as a distribution? Maybe if you, if you don't know that, then you just assume that uh, it's a diffeomorphism except at some isolated points. So we, we, do, we need to um, consider a homeomorphism which is not differentiable uh, on the entire surface, but uh, uh, there are some points where, where the uh, differentiability breaks down. But probably you can just consider the, uh, something like a diffeomorphism except outside finitely many points, then that, that would do. Okay. In that case, it, it's uh, just uh, 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 differential in the ordinary sense. But in general, you have to consider the, the something called uh, differentiation as a, as a distribution. Okay. Is it okay? So, uh, so, 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 well, well, so in your mind, just uh, consider something which is differential for, for almost all, all points in, on, on that sigma one. So then uh, th this is co defined to be a Beltrami coefficient. So, so if H is f f uh, holomorphic, for instance, then uh, um, you have a, you have a cosy Riemann equation. Okay. So that implies this part is zero. Okay. So in the, in the case when, uh, actually it's, uh, the Cauchy-Riemann equation is equivalent condition for the, uh, holom uh, the, the, the being holomorphic. So uh, this should be zero if and only if, well, uh, constantly zero if and only if H is holomorphic. So in general, if it's not holomorphic, then uh, it, it, it may have uh, uh, some something, some complex number here. Still, in general, the the absolute value of this one is uh, less than one. The, 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 this is a general fact. The, this comes from the the, the comparing the Jacobian and uh, <laughs> something like that. But uh, so the, this should be an exercise for you. And then. Uh, We define um, K, um, KH at Z as uh, this one. Um, <coughs> so 
so this is uh, just a real number, which may be so which may be well, arbitrarily large. So well, well, mu h z may be very close to one, then then this should be very large. And if it's uh, zero, then uh, it's just one. So th this is greater. Uh, this is uh, greater than or equal to one, and can be a bit of the large. And uh, this is called uh, dilatation. And so, uh, you can check something like that. So if you, if you have a h1 from sigma 1 to sigma 2 and h2 from sigma 2 to sigma 3, then the uh, um, dilatation of the composition at z is uh, less than or equal to the dilatation, the product of two dilatations, actually, the, something like that. So this is like an exercise. <laughs> now, um, so we define the, the tot, a kind of total maximal maximal dilatation, which is defined to be so the k of k of h, well maybe k k, yeah k of h, k sub h is defined to be the supremum of the dilatation. Up the h at z, where z runs over the the, the points on the sigma one. So this might be infinity. So uh, if the this one this quantity is not bounded, then 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 then, then uh, k h is defined to be infinity. Okay. And this map H is said to be said said to be quasi conformal if and only if um, K sub H is uh, finite. To hear the there's no question. Is, is there anyone who would like to ask something? It's okay. Why did it occur quasi conformal? Okay, so so the conformal means holomorphic, right? So uh, it, this condition doesn't imply the conformality. Still, that be, because it's not infinity, it's, uh, it's somehow that it's uh, close to conformal. That that's it. That's why it's called quasi conformal. So there, there are many. Uh, Qualifiers in, uh, in mathematics, which, which are used uh, in, uh, in such a situation, it's quasi is one of them, or pseudo, or the, or the sub, sub, or something like that. So that they, it, they, they are all kind of the thing qualifier, meaning that it's uh, it's close to something, but uh, not exactly that. <laughs> Now. Um, 
let me state uh, Taichi Miura's theory. So, uh, um, Taichi Miura's theorem. So, um, Taichi Miura. Uh, is a German mathematician uh, who wrote uh, many papers uh, during the period of 1930s to 1940s. And all of the papers uh, were written in German and uh, moreover it's, it's, in a, it's written in a very um, cryptic way so it's, a, it's not easy to understand uh, what he really meant, um, but it contains the, his paper contains many, well very wide range of mathematics, and it's very interesting. It's very fun to read it if you if you can. <laughs> so actually, the, these days you you have we have a English translation of the of his papers, and actually there's a project to translate all of his papers into English and uh, so uh, you can see some of them in, uh, in a series uh, with the title of the handbook of Taichimura theory so which is, which is published in uh, a European mathematical society so uh, but the, this, this, theorem, this theorem is famous and uh, well most people, <laughs> most specialists in this field understand that, uh, uh, precisely what he meant by, by, by this, but uh, there are many other things which are not so easy to understand. So, uh, anyway, so the, so his theorem is something like this. So, suppose sigma 1 and sigma 2 are Riemann surfaces, which are, which are assumed to be homeomorphic. So, we just uh, choose one homeomorphism or one homotopy class of homeomorphism so uh, let h sigma 1 to sigma 2 be a homeomorphism and then uh, there exists a homeomorphism f from sigma 1 to sigma 2 which is homotopic to H and for any homeomorphism um, G from sigma 1 to sigma 2 homo homotopic to H, the maximal dilatation of F is less than or equal to the maximal dilatation of G. So this means F is a homeomorphism realizing the smallest maximal dilatation, smallest maximal dilatation. Okay. So that's the existence part of the uh, of his theorem and uh, the uniqueness part says that the, 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 this equality holds only when a G and F are equal Yep. Um, it is possible that K sub F is infinite. Well, um, it, it's always it's always finite. It's always finite. So, uh, um, so the, this should be finite in in this setting. So probably the and uh, so if, if you maybe I should 
put quasi conformal here, then uh, then it it says that it should be finite. Okay. So it's uh, well, it, it's analogous to uh, uh, the Lipschitz map, uh, which appeared in uh, in Mladen's talk. So it's uh, it's something like uh, uh, it's something corresponding to Lipschitz map in the setting of the complex analysis. That that's so, so quasi conformal map is something like a Lipschitz map in uh, in uh, in the setting of complex analysis. So uh, this should this should be the a uh, map. Realizing the 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 smallest Lipschitz constant, it, it it's close to that. So uh, now we turn to original definition of the Taihimura space. So the, this is a definition by Taihimura. So we consider pair of sigma and f, where sigma is a Riemann surface, and f is a homeomorphism. From sigma s to sigma. And we mod it out. We consider that this kind of set. Well, maybe I should say the orientation preserving. So uh, S, S, so we, we, we are considering the ori orientable S, but we fix some orientation on S. And because sigma is the Riemann surface, it has a natural orientation. So, with respect to these two orientations, we assume that F is uh, orientation preserving. And we need to mod it out by some equivalent relation. So, the, what's the relation? So, that if, you, if you have a two point in the, well, the, well, well, well I, I, should, I, should, I should keep it, I should put some symbol there, but uh, anyway, so it, the, these two are uh, Contained in this set, and these two are equivalent if and only if the composition, this one, is um, homotopic. To a by holomorphic homeomorphism, or in other words, it's conformal homeomorphism. So two Riemann surfaces are identified when there is a conformal homeomorphism between them. Or uh, by homomorphism. So, uh, but here we um, assume that the, such a by homomorphism is in the homotopy class of, of this map. Okay. Okay. So now, Tahimula defined the metric on this. Well, we, we don't have a topology yet, so it's, it's just a set. But Tahimula defined a metric on this set, and uh, so, well, the, because it's a met, it becomes a metric space, it's also a topological space. So he defined the metric in this way. So, 
So suppose you have two points in this set. So so you, so x is a, has a representative like that. And y has a representative like that. And then uh, the distance between uh, these two points is defined to be half of the log of the dilatation, well, infimum of the dilatation, maximal dilatation hom uh, in the homotopy class of the composition of F1 and F2 inverse. So actually by Teichmuller theory, so Teichmuller theorem here, so you have uh, some particular homeomorphism realizing this infimum. So this is equal to kg where, where g is, uh, is the Teichmuller map. Well, the, the, this is called the Teichmuller map actually. The, this is. So Teichmuller map homotopic to F1 <laughs> and F2 inverse. Okay. So uh, and by this inequality, uh, you can see that this dt satisfy the triangular inequality. And uh, well if it's if distance is zero, that means kg is equal to one. So equal, kg is equal to one means uh, that the um, mu mu g is constantly zero, so it's conformal. So that means these two points are equivalent <coughs> with this with respect to this relation, so they are they are the same point in the this quotient space. So uh, dt is equal to zero. If dt x y is equal to zero, if and only if and x y and y are equal. So uh, by triangle inequality and this, and uh, what's lacking is uh, the is the symmetry, but <laughs> uh, you can also show the symmetry. And then, uh, so well, it turns out that dt is actually is a, a distance function. So, uh, or, or that it's a metric. Okay. So this, in this way, the Teichmuller introduced the, this space T of S. Okay. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, why is there one over two? Well, it's uh, just conventional. <laughs> if you, even if you drop it, uh, you get uh, the same kind of metric. But uh, somehow, the, it's a. Uh, so then, uh, well, it's it's just for convenience. Um, it, there's no really mathematical meaning. So it, when, you, when you think of something called the extrema length, it's uh, more convenient to, to put the one, one over two there. But even if you drop it, then you can, you can define the metric. Of course, it's, uh, it's just a twice of that is metric. <laughs> the okay, any other questions? And now, 
one more thing probably before going to dimension 3 and there's something called quadratic differential hol probably holomorphic holomorphic quadratic differential on, uh, on a Riemann surface So it's something written in the form like this. You know, it's a it's a differential form in a, a complex differential form, form of degree two. And then, um, so Teichmuller theorem. Teichmuller theorem says there is a, so if you if you just uh, fix one point in a Teichmuller space, then uh, you can consider the, the space of the quadratic differentials, quadratic differentials on sigma, and uh, there is kind of the, so something like exponential map from the space of quadratic differentials to uh, so what about T Teichmuller space. So uh, actually, for a quadratic differential, you can consider the, um, something like this, and uh, th this becomes a bit crummy <coughs> differential. And uh, well, if you solve the uh, differential equation, which uh, says that this should be the Bertrami differential, then uh, you get uh, some quasi-conformal map. So you, from phi, you can construct a quasi-conformal map, and that quasi-conformal map gives uh, uh, another point in a Teichmuller space. So actually, this is already contained in the Xi theorem, and we know that. So, so th th this is known to be homeomorphic to the Euclidean space of dimension 6g minus 6, where g is a genus of um, S. And uh, this map is a homeomorphism. So, and in this way, the Teichmuller showed that the Teichmuller space is a Euclidean space of dimension 16 minus 6. Okay. So, I still have 15 minutes. So, now, now I turn to the uh, second part. So up to here, the, any other questions? Why, yeah. Why, why does the case on sigma? Oh, sigma here. OK. So uh, quadratic differential has uh, makes sense only when uh, you fix some complex structure on uh, sigma, on, on S. So S is just a topological surface. You have to fix some structure of a Riemann surface to define a uh, homomorphic differential. So you have to pick up some point. So from any point, you can define that. So these maps are different from point to point. But any point, at any point, you can get the homeomorphism between these two spaces. Now we turn to uh, the dimension 3, dimension so it's a, it's a deformation spaces definition deformation spaces of of Kleinian groups. Yep. So what is the image of the map T? It's 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 a subjective. What is the image? So you for, 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 for so you, you get the Bertrami differential, so this should be mu, and you just uh, solve the something like uh, 
something like that, then you get the solution. And that gives a quasi conformal map sigma to some Riemann surface. And that gives a point in the tight middle space. The space of poverty can be regarded as a cotangent space of like the space of the points? The, the space. Oh, yeah, yeah, cotangent space, yeah. So that, that T can be considered. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a co, co, co exponential or something. So, yeah. So, yes, that's right. So definition of the deformation space square. So, that, so we, now we turn to dimension three. So instead of so so um, in a in dimension two, you have you have a complete list of the two dimensional or well, compact uh, two dimensional manifold without boundary. It's just a sequence of the closed surfaces, and you know that the list. But in dimension three, you don't have such a list. So there are many complicated three manifolds. Still, uh, you can start something very simple and uh, very close to dimension two. That is, uh, that is uh, just a product of S and the interval. S is a, S is a closed surface. Close orientable surface of genus greater than or equal to two, and that is just the interval. So, so this is very simple three manifold, compact three manifold with boundary. So you have two boundary components. One is s times zero, and the other is s times one. Okay. And for this um, three manifold, we are going to consider the same kind of space as a Teich Miller. So, so you, 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 we had uh, three kinds of different definitions of Teich Miller space. The first one was what you get by using hyperbolic metrics. And the second one is, well, when you get from, uh, when, when you get, when, if you consider the well, the, the, the second one is, is uh, just a space of the faithful discrete representation of the pi one into psl 2 r module conjugacy. And the third definition was uh, Taichimilus. So what, what do you use the Taichimilus theory? Okay, so this one. So I'm going to uh, try to generalize these three definitions in this setting. The first one should be the hyperbolic matrix. So you, well, so I, I use the script S, H before, but may, maybe I should put three to, 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 to well, well, this stands for the dimension three. So, uh, so you consider, or, or I, I should write S times I, but uh, you, you, well, you just drop that second factor and you just write S. So it's a, uh, Hyperbolic matrix on not not on S times I but on uh, S times uh, the interior of that. So com complete hyperbolic matrix on uh, on the interior of the S, S times I. Okay. And uh, as before, we mod it out by some equivalence relation, where the two matrix are equivalent if and only if there exists, um, probably H should be better, uh, orientation. Preserving um, probably the 
um, it's better to assume that it also the preserve the orientation preserving in both S and I, S direction and I direction. Um, wait a minute. Um, uh, probably he, he, here you, you should just say that H is uh, probably this is better. H is a homeomorphism from S, oh, 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 S cross I to S cross I, which is isotopic. Well, I, 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 I'm not saying homotopic, but isotopic here. Isotopic to the identity. Such that M2 is a product of M1 by, with respect to H. So that should be the um, uh, generalization of the first definition. So there are certain changes here. So I, I change homotopic to isotopic. I, I will later on uh, talk about that. So uh, in a dimension three, uh, for a manifold with boundary, there, there's some certain difference between the homotopy and the isotopy. So I, I, we should do, we should pay attention to that. So that's uh, the generalization of the first definition. And the second definition should be in uh, the, that of the representation space. So it's uh, phase four discrete representations of pi one of s. So pi one of s times i is equal to pi one of s. So it's, you just go to pi one of s into uh, the orientation preserving isometric group of the H3 that is equal to PSL2C which is uh, the quotient of SL2C by plus minus 1. Modular conjugacy. That's the second definition. I put A uh, here to um, say that it's, uh, it's something algebraic. So, so we, we are now considering the uh, algebraic kind of thing, so that we, we put A here. So to distinguish it from this one. Oh, oh I, I should write it here. So H of S is this. The third one. Um, This should use a quasi-conformal map, and it takes time. So may maybe before defining the third one, <laughs> let me just uh, uh, let, let me finish with uh, some some kind of the, uh, uh, explanation of the topology of dimension three, which is which might be a bit different from topology of dimension two. So. So, so here, I, I, I stopped the definition here, and I, I will uh, define uh, in, uh, the deformation space in a, in a third way in a, in a, in a next in the next session. So, so I, I, I just uh, tell you one one thing which is different from this definition. So, in a in a dimension two, for instance, if you have a if you have a to homotopy carry so, so so if you have a homo homotopy if you have a homotopy equivalence between two um, closed surfaces then it it must be homotopic to a homeomorphism. So 
So, uh, do you know this? <laughs> so it, it's something called bare, bare, no, bare Nielsen theorem, which is a classical theorem in a, in a, in a low dimensional topology. But here the the assumption that uh, the uh, surface is closed is essential. For instance, if you drop that condition, so for such a thing, and uh, <laughs> so it's uh, 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 I, I, I'm not good at drawing. So it's uh, oh, this this should come that way, and uh, this should come that way. So you have uh, something like that. So th this is obtained by pasting two bands along the rectangle. So here you have a rectangle. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, ho it's homeomorphic to a torus, the complement of the disk in a, in a torus. So here you just, uh, that's, that just a planar surface. So these two are homotopy equivalent. Right. Okay, the, the, both of them is homotopy equivalent to uh, just uh, figure eight. Okay, but they are not homeomorphic to each other. So he, this one has three boundary components. This one has just one boundary component. So they they are not homeomorphic. So. Uh, in dimension three, you have uh, the same kind of problem. So if you just consider the closed three manifold, then, uh, well, the difference between homotopy equivalence, uh, there, there is actually a difference between homotopy equivalence and uh, homomorphism, but it's a very rare phenomenon. On the contrary, if you consider the uh, three manifold, compact three manifold with boundary, then it's quite often that the homotopy equivalence doesn't imply the homeomorphism, as in, as in this example. So here we are considering the, the three manifold with boundary, which, which is, this one is, is the simplest. And uh, for this one, any homotopy, any three manifold homotopy equivalent to this one, is actually homeomorphic to this one. But there is a homotopy equivalence which is not homotopic to the, 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 homo, the homeomorphism. Or if it is not, sorry, if it is not, uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, the, well, actually, any, any homotopy equivalence implies a homeomorphism. Still, the, the, there is a two classes of the isotopic, uh, uh, two isotopic classes of the homeomorphism. So if you just flip the direction of i, you get uh, another homeomorphism. So, uh, so, so if you, that, 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 that's what we have, have to have in mind when we consider the compact three manifold, and it, it, it plays an essential role in the, in the next talk. So for uh, this one, I should stop here.